The two French squadrons are here now, Bentham, off Tunis. They plan to sail direct to Port Said and proceed through the canal to join our fleet for the maneuvers in the Red Sea. When exactly will they reach the canal? We had a wire from the French Admiral this morning. It says, fleet arrives Port Said, 23 o'clock, 16th instant, compliments, Delacour Admiral Commanding. There's even less time than I thought. Isn't it possible to delay them somehow? What's the matter with you Secret Service people? Why on earth shouldn't the French fleet proceed? Last week, one of our men in Egypt reported he was on the verge of finding out something which might mean trouble in connection with these joint maneuvers. That's nonsense. What trouble could there be, man? Our relations with France are as cordial as they ever were. More so, in fact. What I'm afraid of, Lord Streetly, is that there's some scheme on foot to strain those relations. What? That would be disastrous, Bentham. Disastrous? Exactly, sir. With this present tension in Europe, can't you do something to detain that French fleet until we get more news? I'll tell you what. I'll speak to the Prime Minister. Perhaps we can persuade the French Admiralty to hold the fleet off Tunis for the balance of this week. We can't do more than that. They will accordingly remain here until orders received. Send this off to Paris and take this message for my wife on the steamer Himalaya, reaching Port Said tonight. A radio message for you, Madame Delacour. Merci. Mama, is it from Father? Is it from Father, Mama? Yes, yes, dear. He sends you his love. Uh, no bad news, I hope, Madame. Oh, no, Monsieur Novel. Merely disappointing. Oh, Mama, aren't you going to see Father after all? Aren't you, Mama? Of course we are, darling. Uh, the uh, naval maneuvers have not been called off. Oh, no, just a change of orders. Oh, it must be very interesting to receive important information like that before anyone else. <laughs> Admiral's wives are always the last to hear of anything of real importance. I admire your discretion, madame. I say, when do we land? I I've just been up in the forecastle, the front of it, you know, um, looking at the town. Oh, what a sinister, brooding place. Did you get the sinister, brooding smell of it? Oh, I say, this is so exciting. I just thought of a marvelous heading for my third chapter. Listen to this. Port side. The glamorous gateway to the mystic east. Aren't you infringing a little bit on Mr. Halliburton? I never heard of him. You should find plenty of material here for your book, Monsieur Venable. Am I in your book, Rollo? I want to be in your book. <laughs> of course you're in the book. You're all in it. Listen to this. Just, just a few notes. Just listen. The adventure begins. Moonlight madness, shipmates and deck companions, and the oriental Sherlock. Mr. Sherlock. He means Mr. Moto, darling. Oh, by the way, where is Mr. Moto? I'd like to say goodbye to him. There is no need yet for goodbyes. Business detains me in Port Side for several days before I continue my journey. Where are you staying, Mr. Moto? At the home of friends. Uh, do you by any chance know a wayside inn? You know, a place with local color, of whirling dervishes and, and so forth. Where tourists find their throats cut? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. I think. First class passengers will assemble in the lounge for passport inspection. Come along, Marie. We must find Nana and show our passport. Say goodbye, Nana. Go Bye. ahead, I'll show you this. Oh, now, look here. No, no, really. Honey must have stolen my passport, have I? Didn't I see you press your passport in your notebook? Oh, yes, there it is. That's very clever, Mr. Mary. Thank you so much. Well, goodbye, old boy. Goodbye. I'll see you at the hotel. All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Mr. Norville, this man says he has business with you. Ah, oh, the travel agent, eh? Hawkins is my name, Bert Hawkins. We made all your arrangements, sir. Give my reservation at the hotel? Yes, sir. And I hope that everything is satisfactory. Well, it seems to be so far. Excuse me, please. I, too, must go through the formality of passport examination. Have you got a match, Hawkins? I don't think it's how I have, sir. Well, don't you look in your left-hand pocket? Oh, yes, here's a packet, sir. That Japanese is the man. Have you got your instructions? Yes, sir. I've got a cab waiting. All right. Help me through the customs and we'll pick him up there. Very good, sir.
Observe my permit and the credentials, please. We are waiting for him outside. Hey, Annie, I'll send it to go. What on earth are you carrying all that for? My dear chap, only tourists allow anyone to carry their kids. I'm so very sorry. I regret. It was entirely my fault. Come on, sir. Go and do it. Find me a convenient tree. Here he comes. Now. I'm terribly sorry. Are you all right, Mr. Moto? Yes, please. My own fault. No harm done. Uh, won't you let me give you a lift? I'll be glad to drive you any place you want to go. You are most kind, of Mr. Noble, but I must not trouble you. Oh, nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. No trouble at all. I'm going to the Cady Hotel. You might just as well drive with us. Come on, Mr. Moto. Come on, jump in, Mr. Moto. Ah, then. This is not the Kereva Hotel. No, but it's where you get out. Come on. You better do what he says, Mr. Motto. Please, I do not understand. Come on, get moving. What do you want with me? Never you mind. None of your monkey tricks. Inside. Well, that's the end of Mr. Murdo. What are you calling your book, Mr. Venable? Roughing it with a rolling stone. Or a peep into the interior. Good. Hi, Norvell. Oh, good evening. Good evening. I see you're all settled and comfortable, eh? Yes, but Marie was tired out. Her nurse has put her to bed. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. you know, I was just saying to Madame de la Corte, we should see the town. You know, the real port side. Not this stuff the tourists see. That's an excellent idea. But you must be very careful. He's a venturesome soul, you know. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Now you're pulling my leg. Oh, you know I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, but seriously, why don't you join us? I'm sorry, but I have a business appointment. And anyway, I'm not a desperate fellow like you. I'm nervous. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Eric Norvell. Yes? I have a message for you. Very urgent. By hand. Oh. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. That's excellent, my appointment has been cancelled. Oh, oh, good. Now I can come with you, Marco Polo. Marco. <laughs> shall we show this fire eater to the real port side, or shall I take you to the local music hall? <laughs> <laughs>
Alfred, don't lie to me. I saw you dabbling about in the gutter. What were you doing? Looking for a novelty for me lady friend. <laughs> well, don't you think it's time you married the girl? Blimey now, it gives me the creeps to see her once a week. <laughs> Alfred, you shouldn't be little matrimony. Married men live longer than single ones. <laughs> it only seems longer. <laughs> I think that you'd better go into your song. All right, I'll sing a song if you drink a glass of water and smoke a cigarette with your left hand. Very well. What are you going to sing? Dumped him in the old Kent Road. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to sing something classical. Opera. What? Carry on. Music, Professor. <laughs> a cigarette. What's the matter? Can't you find a match? <laughs> Look in me left hand pocket, you fool. <laughs> Bet you don't know how to make a Maltese cross. Well, how would you make a Maltese cross, young man? By pulling its tail. Music, Professor. I do like to be beside the seaside. I do like to be beside the sea. I do like to stroll upon the prom, 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 where the brass bands play, tiddly hum, pum, pum. So just let me be beside the seaside. I'll be beside myself with glee. And there's lots of girls beside. I should like to be beside, beside the seaside, beside the sea. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the way you've received our little offering. Shut up, Fabian. We do our best to entertain you. Hurry up, you big dummy. Oh, I've got friends coming back to you. This is intermission. Get off, you big hand. <laughs> Hello, Mark of He's marvelous. He uh, uh, juggles things, you know. Give us here over there. Please. You, you, come on, come on. 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 Marguerite Wismuster, always the same story, night after night after night, and then to catch you in the alley. Your performance suffers. Oh, shame. Well, the show must go on. Day's work. Now, well, you and I will complete the project. I'm sorry for using melodramatic tricks to get you men up here, but then we can't be too careful. Novell here arrived tonight in the Hamadia. And by a strange coincidence, Mr. Moto of the International Police was also aboard. Moto? Novell warned me by cablegram, and I arranged for Mr. Moto to be taken care of. Mention this to show you there's always a possibility of our being watched. And never forget, there must be nothing to show what government is employing us. The slightest mistake means death. Now, Norvell, did you learn the date? Not yet. But that Delacour woman had a radiogram from her husband tonight. Looks as if the fleet's arrival has been postponed. Oh, that's either very good or very bad. Gives us more time, but it might mean suspicion. Nevertheless, we'll go through with it. Nothing must stop us, nothing. 
It's a good job Mr. Milton was out of the way. He was dangerous. Yes. I'm just about to cancel him. What have you got there? A little collection of my own. It's taken me a long time to compile. This is the reverse of what police call a rogues gallery. Oh, a detective's gallery, huh? Detectives, secret servicemen, police of all nationalities. Can I have a look? There he is. Hmm. Well, so much for Mr. Moto. That's really a magnificent idea. May I? Surely. How much remains to be done, Fabian? A day's work, Noto. You and I will complete the project. It is near completion, then? Oh, that is good. I had no idea you would be so far advanced by this time. Have you taken care of your end, Danforth? I have fixed the passports and entry into any Aegean or Adriatic port. Well, it's been a drawback not knowing our exact plans. You'll know in plenty of time. Now all of you go back and watch the rest of the show. Novell, we must know what's in that radiogram. I'll get it for you tonight, don't worry. Good. Report to me later at Connie's place. Quiet. What was that? I didn't hear anything. Neither did I. I'm afraid you're overly suspicious, Mr. Fabian. Perhaps. I don't trust anyone. Not even Alfred. <laughs> I'll walk back with you as far as the past door. Wait a minute. Aren't you late, Monsieur Marcadet? You'd better hurry. Go oh, away. Wait a minute. the dressing rooms right away. He's backstage somewhere. Hakeem, watch the stage door. We we'll search all the dressing rooms. Mine first. There's no one here. I'll take this for you. Go up to the next level. All right. I shouldn't do that if I were you, Mr. Burke. It isn't worthy of your excellent position with the British Secret Service. Who are you? I'm your friend. You are in a more dangerous position than I am. But who are you? Don't give yourself away by removing your photograph. Continue to search for me. I'm Moto. Meet me at 42 Shariel Serda tonight, directly opposite Connie's place. Watch out. Trace of him? No. Let's go and find Fabian. There's no sign of him in any of the dressing rooms. Never mind. You'd better get back to Madame Delacour. All right. What's a clover here? Marguerite, she's very bad girl. She gives another less performance, then comes hiding here. I come following her, and this voice toss her. She assassinates me. I'm terribly sorry. I can explain everything. Now, just a minute. Somebody robbed my dressing room, and I saw Monsieur Marcadet sneaking around here, and I jumped on him. gone from this window. I will have a search, man. And you, please, keep your Marguerite and please a bit doing performance. Well, it's one good thing at any rate. 
Whoever he was, he couldn't have heard much listening in there. He listened, and that's too much. That's all, Danford. I'll phone you when I need you. Yes, sir. Say, Alfred, don't you think this gentleman bears a strange resemblance to Mr. Danforth? Now, do you know me, Chankina? Have you got any iodine? Oh, been speaking out of turn again, huh? Okay, I'll get some iodine and bring it up to your room. Hey, Bill. Oh, it's nothing. I just wanted to tell you I'm expecting a visitor tonight, a man called Novell. All right, but what did you do to that hand? A dog at the theater nipped me. Oh, I don't want you to go foaming at the mouth around here. Come on and give us that mitt. Why don't you let the bloke alone? Take more than a dog bite to hurt him. Oh, be as funny as you like, but in this filthy town it might be serious. A wolfhound once bit Alfred, all he got was splinters. I'm getting a bit fed up on your jokes. Don't listen to her, Alfred. It was funny at first, but now it's getting past a laugh. Why, you, you actually treat that dummy as, as though it were a human being. Oh, getting insulting, eh? Oh, I'm sick of Alfred. To tell you the truth, I'm sick of the whole dirty business you're in. Whatever it is. Why can't we be together more? Why all this hide and seek? Why do I have to run a dive like this and pretend I hardly know you? Wait a minute. I've always done what you told me to without asking questions, but now I've got to know. Why do you pretend to be a third-rate music hall turn? What's your real game? Why don't you let me in on it so I can help you? You've said enough. Now be quiet. Sorry. I didn't mean to go flying off the handle like that. I guess it's because I love you so much. Hmm. So you want to know all about my business, huh? Mm hmm All right, take a seat in the office. If you're so curious, I'm going to tell you everything. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold that hand still and not talk. Yes, Mr. Burke. 
I'm sorry to welcome you so inhospitably, but darkness is necessary if we are to observe the movements of the enemy. Please sit down. You really are Mosul, then? That is my one permanent characteristic. But I thought Mosul was dead. Fabian doesn't usually make mistakes. He made a grave mistake tonight when he murdered a countryman of mine, and he will regret it. Was this man deliberately posing as you? He was my colleague, keeping Mr. Norvell under observation. Incidentally, he diverted suspicion from myself. You see, at present, I'm Kuroki, dealer in Oriental art, and I'm in Port Said now for quite some time. How did you know me? You were, I believe, in Nepal about two years ago, posing there as a Buddhist priest. But I thought only our Secret Service knew about that. You may remember that extremely dirty mule driver who accompanied you to the border. What's that? Oh, yes. Moto, I'm beginning to believe all the stories I've heard about you. Please do not. I do not. But should we not return to our present assignment, I'm interested in the extent of your information. It isn't nearly enough. Fabian doesn't confide in his men. He merely uses them. But you sent a report to London only last week. It was more warning than report. All I was able to tell them was that there's a plot to cause trouble between England and France, which has some connection with the visit of the French fleet. That undoubtedly explains their postponed arrival. But they can't hold them long unless we discover Fabian's exact plans. Observe. Mr. Norrell is arriving. Come back later. Why, hello, Mr. Normal. You remember me, don't you, Captain Hawkins of the Vulcan? Oh, yes. How are you, Captain? Fine, thanks. What's Fabian? Upstairs, room number 10. And tell him I'm down here, will you? Well, glad to have seen you, Captain. Right. Oh, bring back my body to me. When you get down, see if Novell has come. All right, sweetheart. Oh, here he is now. Connie, this is Mr. Novell. He just arrived from Europe. This is Miss Porter, the proprietor's here. Pleased to meet you. I'm honored. See you later, maybe, Mr. Fabian, and take care of that hand. Come in. Very attractive, the proprietor. Don't do any talking in front of her, but if you have to, we're in a smuggling racket. I had to tell her that because she was getting too curious. Oh, I see. Uh, an intimate friend. Uh... I've known her for six years. I helped the dodge of the English police, and I got her out of the country. She's all right, but I'm not taking any chances. Did you get that radiogram? Yes, I copied it and put it back in her bag so that Madame de la Cour shouldn't become suspicious. But it doesn't help us at all. Here's all it says. Changed orders. Will not see you until three days later than expected. My love to you and Marie. Well, who's Marie? Oh, a child, about five years old. Can't you get the woman to talk? She's the very essence of discretion. It's vital that we find out that date. But can't we just make our preparations and then wait until the French ships are sighted? Oh, use your head, man. We've got to get everything ready for a definite time and then lie low. We're being watched and we don't know who's watching us. Well, at least we got rid of Mr. Moto. But who was the man in the theater? And here, have a look at this. You ever seen this face before? The beard's my own idea. Somebody who was in my dressing room tonight started to tear this thing out and then stopped. Who is it? Done for. Of course. But he couldn't possibly be a British agent. It was he who fixed our fake passports to get out of here. Those passports were forged in Cairo by a man called Danford, who I've never seen. This man's Burke. Somehow he intercepted the real Danford coming up here. Well, what are we going to do? Do you recall Mr. Burke suggesting he'd like to know our exact plans? Yes. Well, I'm going to show him what it's all about. Ah. I think he'll be interested and very useful. Ah. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to work on a new plan to get that date. See that you do. And phone Mr. Burke Danforth at the Marina Hotel tonight. Mm. Be very pleasant. Tell him I want him here just before dawn, say, uh, 4.30. Whichever way I turn, I come up against a strong wall. I've never known so little at this stage of a case. I, too, must confess to a feeling of futility. Mr. Fabian's methods display a certain genius. We don't even know the name of the ship they got those clearance papers for. And that ship, perhaps, is the key. You better go now, Mr. Burke. We'll meet again tomorrow afternoon. Where? I'll phone you. What is your address? A small hotel called the Marina. 
You must not be seen here. You'll find another door in the back room. Good evening, please. Oh, uh, are you open? Closing now for hours, but always open for number one customer. Oh, dear, that, that sign there says you speak English. Oh, speaking English, very fluent. <laughs> Only he's selling E1 articles. Oh, me savvy. Uh, me look see in window. Me uh, want to buy number one PC. Oh, entering, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> entering, please, my humble shop. Oh, it's awfully nice. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wonderful antiques. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Supreme collection. Buddhas, all dynasties, scrolls, all assortments, weapons, all murderers. Shooting you? Uh, no, not tonight, thanks. Um, me see ring in window. Yes, How much is This one? No, no, not that one. No, no the scarab ring. Oh, so? Mm. Gentlemen having first class knowledge. <laughs> this ring being very ancient. Observe. Oh. Being said to come from tomb of Cleopatra. No. Yes, sir. Oh, I say. Oh, plenty too much money, maybe. Oh, no, no. Being new customer, I selling cheap. Sixty piastres, maybe. Oh, I say that's jolly decent of you. But I, I really... Oh, no, no, no. But making small reduction. Forty piastres suiting you. But promising always handled with great care. Oh, yes, rather. Well, I, I thank you. I'm very much obliged to you. Uh, I have a... Give you oh. five pound note. Oh, yes, sir, being very large, hoping to make change. Apologizing, please, but being correct amount. What, all those piastres for me? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. All for five pounds. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Lost, isn't it? Here he comes. I shall certainly be back tomorrow. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, uh, nighty nighty, Mr. Uh, Kuroki. Oh, yes. Hey, buddy. Yes? Shoes untied. Oh, is it really? Oh, thanks very much, old boy. Help! This is obviously a case of mistaken identity. Oh, help! Yes, I think so, thank you. Oh, there, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, they no catchy money. <laughs> oh, better hiding it, please. And speak English, I understand him. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Crokey. I'm deeply grateful. It was wonderful. Being very simple. Judo, often miscarred by foreigners, jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Off Adak, you are adding whom in Arabia? Yeah, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please. In here. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. You staying at Kitty Hotel? Uh, yes, I am, yes. To Kitty Hotel, please. Well, now, now Mr. Kerr, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yes, sir, but humbly suggesting change of costume then. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Uh, wear something as if I looked I wasn't worth loving. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> That's a jolly good scheme. <laughs> good night, sir. Thanks, Bill. Uh, yes, the dinghy that passed for the World House War. You boys missed something just now. Yeah, what? Nice rough arts outside. Nothing new in this aristocratic neighborhood. Oh, this was. A little bit of a Japanese playing ping pong with a couple of bruises. The Japanese? Yes, Kuroki, the shopkeeper from over the way. Why, there he is, sitting right behind you. Good evening, please. Nice work, Mr. Kuroki. You boys better keep civil or Mr. Kuroki might get rough with you. I know who you are. Yeah? So, yes. 
Very interesting. You funny fellow at theater with dummy, talking in stomach, very clever. So you've been to the show, have you? Oh, yes, I write in everything, but you best. Very funny. Were you at the show tonight? Oh, yes, seeing show every Friday, being great admirer of artists. Have you a drink with me, please? No, you thanks. Johnny, I think this dressing ought to be changed. Okay, I'll do it. Were you hurt in hand, please? Being very sorry. The dog at the theater bit me. Oh, yes, seeing him in show. Very clever dog. Mm -hmm. See you later. Good night, Mr. Kiroki. Good night, sir. Good night, Miss Porter. Have you a drink with me, please? No. I don't drink with no strangers, see? What's more, I don't know with no foreigners neither, see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you gentlemen not liking you. Don't pay any preliminary attention to that blighter, Mr. Kuroki. He always gets like that when he's had a couple of beers. Oh, yes. Who is he, please? See the man? Yes, he's the captain of the Blooming Vulcan. Thanking you very much. And thank you. What's all this with the little Kuroki? Nothing, maybe. But I've got a hunch he might be more than he seems. You mean a revenue man? Mm, something of the sort. Now, look, I'm going to be away most of tomorrow, and I want you to do something for me. Does that mean I, I'm really in with you? I told you, didn't I? Oh, perhaps I didn't think you meant it. Certainly I meant it. Now, listen. Tomorrow, all the time that I'm gone, I want you to watch Kuroki. Kuroki? Out of the salvage boat, the Vulcan. The Vulcan, eh? That must be the ship the port clearances were for. Yes, I think you'll find it very interesting. Is this the car? Yes. <laughs> go away, go away. Uh, empty. Yes, yes, well, the normal raise everything. He's got to get the picnic basket now. I say, I'm dying to see that ancient tomb he was talking about, aren't you? What's a tomb, Rallo? Well, it, it's, uh, well, I can't... Monsieur Novell told me nothing about a tomb. He just invited us to a desert breakfast. Oh, I say, I, I have let the cat out the bag, haven't I? What cat, Rallo? What bag was it in? Oh, just a little time. Oh, don't. Uh, Good morning, I'm sorry I'm late. I say, this is ripping, really, isn't it? Well, well, should we start? Uh, you know what to go, driver. And I'm up on you. Take this and show Mr. Kuroki in. Yes, sir. This way, Mr. Kuroki. How do you do, Mr. Lizzo? It is good of you to receive me so promptly, General. Not at all, not at all. Take it down. Well, how is that mare's nest they sent you to thread it out to honor? <laughs> the nest is here beyond doubt, but uh, I'm afraid we shall find it to be that of a tiger. Oh, then you know more. But the last time you were doubtful. Oh, yes, General, but now I have more than a suspicion. Well, what do you want us to do? Make some arrests? Couple of platoons? Anything you like, you know? Later, perhaps. At present, I merely wish information concerning a vessel named the Vulcan. Vulcan? Oh, well, oh, she's just a salvage ship working on a wreck a couple of miles offshore. Oh, so? A legitimate enterprise? Oh, definitely. Some silly cargo boat went and got herself rammed and sunk a few weeks ago, and uh, the owners commissioned the Vulcan to salvage her. May I be permitted to investigate the ship, General? Oh, certainly, but if you're barking up that tree, Mr. Moto, you certainly will find a mare's nest. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll arrange for a cutter to take you out tomorrow. Thank you, General. Would you please tell me the location of this wreck? Oh, certainly, certainly. Yes, she is up here. 
There she is, that little red fella, do you see him? Lying in uh, 15 fathoms of water, huh? And that is where the Vulcan is anchored today? Yeah. Oh, Neat, isn't it? We do enough salvage work to satisfy the port authorities or any investigator. Then we get on with our job, like the three divers below now. It was amazing luck to find a wreck just where you wanted it. Not luck. The ship belonged to our employers, and we arranged to sink it here at the mouth of the canal. You still haven't told me what the divers were actually doing. Don't tell me you can't figure that out, Mr. Danforth. Planting explosives? The entrance of the canal. In a few more hours, we'll have the whole area mined, with death charges controlled from shore. What an idea. Destroy the French fleet as it starts through. The leading ships, at any rate. They'll block the entrance. You're so interested in the work, you ought to see for yourself, Mr. Danforth. Come over here. Never been down in a diving bell? You'll find it quite an experience. It's a bit cramped for two. Yes, I should imagine it is. Well, I'm going to stand aside and let you go alone. Help him in. Just a minute. I'd, uh, I'd like to understand a little more, Fabian. Isn't it clear to you yet? Anyway, there's a phone in there. We'll be in touch. All right. It's on the bottom, connect me. Hello. Hello, Danford. Are you on the bottom yet? All right, hold on a minute. Hello, Danford. How's the view? Not bad at all, Fabian. Congratulations. Very nice work indeed. But you'll never make France believe England did it. Oh, I think I can handle that all right. Suppose there's evidence to show that the whole thing was managed by a British Secret Service agent. How would that do? And suppose we call the agent S-14. You'd better hurry if you want to say anything. It's a pity we forgot to put oxygen tanks in the bell. All right, Fabian, you've got me. But you never <coughs> succeed. <coughs> Thousand to one I do. Cut that cable. So long, Mr. Park. Turn him loose. Being very certain, please, that Mr. Danvers not there. Also, please tell him when seeing him that Mr. Kuroki calling. How do you spell the name, please? K-Rakin Kimono. 
Oh, oh, sure. Kuroki, you're fine here. I have a message for you. Would you like me to read it out loud for your own information? Yeah. Yeah. Here is it. Boss has sent for me. Period. May learn enough to make full report tonight. End of message, mein Herr. Thanking you very much. And please being certain to tell Mr. Danford when returning that Mr. Kuroki expecting him. Very important, please. about you. I thought I told you not to fool with Alf. Now leave him alone. Oh, I didn't hurt your pet. Well, Val called, I've been here. Hasn't called, hasn't been. I wonder what's keeping him. What about Kuroki? This morning he went to the port commandant's office. Came out in about 15 minutes. Then he gave me the slip. But he's back at his shop now. Went to the commandant, did he? I didn't think it was so good myself. What's it mean, that he is a revenue man? Don't you worry your head, honey. If you're coming to the show, you better get changed. And on your way down, send Hawkins up, will you? Aren't you are. Fabian, and your laundry's back. What, already? Yeah, they refused it. <laughs> oh, you're tippy. Fabian, I'll see you right away in his room. All right. Hey, wake up! Hey! Connie said as how you wanted to see me. That's right. I've got a job for you. Well, anything you say, Governor. I want you to make one of those packages of yours and have it ready for tonight. Blimey, who are we going to do in this time? Mr. Kuroki. Meanwhile, in the Mediterranean, French squadrons proceed full speed ahead to the gigantic naval maneuvers to be held with Great Britain in the Red Sea. With all Europe engaged in a costly armament race, the tension grows daily. Only a spark is needed to touch off the tinderbox of the world. But as long as England and France remain close friends, war clouds in Europe are unlikely. Hello, Fabian. Sorry I couldn't get back any sooner. Did you learn the date? Yes. The trick with the child worked. When we went on that picnic to the desert this afternoon, I managed to get the child away from her mother, and she told me she was going to see her father tomorrow morning. Good. That won't give anybody time to stop us. But you and I will have to work most of the night. Starting when? As soon as I've taken Connie home, she's out front. Meanwhile, here's some news for you. Yeah? The man who was listening next door was Kuroki, a Japanese who keeps a junk shop opposite Connie's place. Japanese, eh? What's more, Kuroki is really Mr. Moto. Mr. But that isn't possible. Everything fits too well. Have you got rid of him? Hakim's on the job now, but I want you to check on it. Could you tell me where Mr. Fabian's dressing room is? It's the third door down, on your left. Thanks. What did I tell you? He is human after all. Don't you expect any trouble about getting away? Our minds will blow the French flagship to bits. During the commotion, nobody will notice the Vulcan slip away. Our papers are all in order. Sailing permit everything. Even visas for the passengers. Well, that's fine. See you later. Right. Ah, uh, good evening. 
I thought I'd come back and see you. Didn't you enjoy the show, Miss Porter? Oh. You'd better take care of that right away, Norvo. Come in, Connie, come in. Who told you to come backstage? And who told you to lie to me? What's the matter with you? So you didn't want me to know what you were really up to. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's no use trying to deny it. I heard you just now. Smuggling. That's a fine word he used to blow hundreds of men to bits and start another war. That's enough. And don't think you can get away with it. Now listen to me. You're in this as deep as any of us, and you're going to come along with me and not say a word to anybody. Alf, what do you think of her? Tells a man she's been in love with him for six years and then wants to see him hanged. And why? Because he's working against a covey that wanted to send her to jail. <laughs> And if it hadn't been for me, she'd be rotting right now in Dartmoor Prison. That's gratitude for you, isn't it? Oh, what's the matter, darling? Listen, you've nothing to thank England for. Why, well, you can't even go back there, ever. Come on, now, be sane. Stick with me. Hmm?
Sorry, fast the clown to office. Begging pardon, please. Why? If it isn't Mr. Kuroki here. Excusing, please, but being in great haste. <laughs> I say, how do you like this kid? <laughs> Those rats wouldn't try and pick my pockets now, eh? <laughs> Mr. Venables, you are an Englishman. You would do your country a service, wouldn't you? I say, I say you're talking differently. You are Mr. Kuroki, aren't you? There's no Kuroki. I'm Moto, agent of the International Police. Oh, it's been... <laughs> what? It isn't simple, I know, but this, Mr. Venables, may convince you. But I know Mr. Moto. He was on the boat with he me. He was a we... fellow agent of mine, passing as myself for reasons of duty. By Jove! You will assist me, Mr. Venables. Oh, I say, what an adventure! Then go to the port commandant at once and tell him Moto needs immediate assistance. In there, you understand? Yes, sir! I presume. No, 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 it's Venables, it's Venables, the very man I want to see. Well, well what on earth are you doing here and in these clothes? Oh, look, oh, but it's frightfully important. It's, it's, it's a matter of life and death, secret service, king and country. But what is all this? Mr. Moto, the real one. He, he's on a big job in that warehouse over there. I, I must go to the port commandant immediately and get help. Let me go in your car, please. No, well, you really seem to be in the midst of things, don't oh, no, you? Come along, no, come no, 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 wait a minute, I have a better idea. Yes? I'll send my driver with a message to the port commandant, yes. and you and I will go back to the warehouse. Don't you realize Mr. Moto might be in danger? Oh, of course. Of course, it's been, Thanks, off it, boy. Come along, it's Come along. All I can say is, Jackie, my lad, I hope as how you really did get him. He was in the back room at the time of the explosion. What we should have done was to took him aboard the Vulcan and docked him over the side, the same as we'd done with the other one. Oh, a body. Hawkins, where are you? Here, Mr. Orville, anything wrong? Blimey, who's this? Have you seen Mr. Moto? Have you seen... Have you seen... Well, I, I don't understand. Oh, don't, don't point that at me. Oh. Keep quiet. Have you heard anything? This fool says Moto's in here. What? Moto? You bungled your job. Go and search the place. Why, you dirty rotten bat! The other one. All right, now. Tie them both up in sacks and drop them over. Yes, that's what we should have done in the first place. Blow me that pup there, give me a nasty scratch. All right, now, hurry up. I'm going to report to Fabian. All right, come on, Ed. Get the sacks, Ed. Here they are. Got plenty of weights in them? Yeah. Well, go straight to the bottom. Got it. Now, he's coming too. Good. Now, let's see if you're slippery enough to get out of this. Oh, your cheek is bleeding. I'm sorry, Captain Hawkins. Yeah, you'll be sorry for yourself in half a minute. Come on, in you go.
Well, that scratch wasn't by any chance caused by the ring on Mr. Rollo's hand. Well, what if it was? Oh, <laughs> it would be amusing. <laughs> what is all this? I'll knock that smile off your doll in a minute. Come on. What's making you laugh? The justice of the poets, Captain. To wrap the thought in other words, your face. My face? What about my face? Oh, poor Captain Hawkins. I do cherish a fellow feeling for you. After all, we are both rapidly nearing death. What? He's endeavoring to gain time. Oh, your row. What is it? Oh. Come on, out with it, out with it. It is quite simple, Captain Hawkins. You see, I sold that ring to Mr. Rollo. The ring is very ancient, and if you were to examine it carefully, you would find a spring which releases a small needle between the eyes of the scarab. I'm very sorry for you, poor Captain Hawkins, but that point was impregnated with a uh, tuak. What's that? Poison? One of the deadliest known. I don't believe you. Under that sack, let's have a deck out that ring. There ain't nothing in it at all. Go on, go on. It's all right to talk in front of us. She's going to be with me all the time. Well, the explosion didn't kill Motor. What? He was in the warehouse, but we got them both. I told Hawkins to... Uh... Right, but we'll make sure. There's been too many mistakes. Come on, Connie. Me? Yes, honey. You're going to be with us on everything. Come on. Try and fool me, would you? What have you been so long about? Well, this hoary handle told me some yarn about a ring with a spike in it. And there wasn't no spike at all. Stop chattering and get rid of these. Now, while I watch you. Hurry up. Now we can get out with our work. Connie. She's gone. Connie. to double cross me after all. I tried to stop you and I will stop you. <laughs> I don't think so. supposed to be dead. Well, de dead? Extremely dead. They tied us in sacks and dropped us off this wharf. Well, into the wharf. How did we get here? I was fortunate enough to obtain a piece of steel which enabled me to cut myself loose and then to save you. The literature, of course. Oh, oh I say, that. thanks awfully. Now, Mr. Venables, listen carefully to what I say. Uh, everything's ready now. Now, look here, Fabian. Why must I do this? You know I've had no experience with this sort of thing. Because I'm not trusting anyone but myself to give the signal when the flagship passes the buoy. So that leaves you. Come on, there's nothing to it. Give me a hand with this gear. Take it outside. Don't worry, Mr. Moto. I'll get through.
Here they come. Down you go. You'll find a plunger box out here and some wreckage. Look for the anchor. You can't miss it. Okay. And remember, don't make the contact until you get the signal from me. Three jerks on the line. Got it? All right. Degrees. Radio fleet. Hear it below. Oh, there you are, Mr. Murdo. Who is this woman? A very gallant lady who saved my life. Will you please see that she's looked after, General? Certainly, Sergeant. Take this lady inside, sir. I suppose those explosions were part of your mare's nest, or? It was the other nest, General. What? The tigers. Fortunately, I was able to avert disaster. Well, it's vitally important that we should know what country is behind this. Vitally important. Oh, yes, rather, it is. Absolutely, it is. What, the... what is all this tomfoolery? What the deuce? Wait a minute. This may be the answer to our question. Yes, indeed. See for yourself, General. Is it? Tell me the name of the country. It'll make a wonderful ending to my last chapter. Don't talk, Mr. Moto, or you might lose your job. Who said that? 